Craig, we're at 1540. Not a great spot to be in, obviously, only a 37% chance. Um, but how does this shake out? Um, if we win, obviously, we know what happens if we lose, the, uh, lose this point. Yeah, if we get to 3040, then we're up to 53%. If the other side is simply a game, things are, things are done. Yep. So, well, you know, well. we're trying, you know, one more point, 1540, one more point. We're, we're actually favored slightly. You know, it's very even, but, but you know, 3% in our favor there. Mm. So, you know, 1540 can still very much feel like the bottom of the well, but you win one more point and you are now the favorite. So it's not as far down the well as you think that, it, that, that you are. Now we talked about the love 40 point is a lot of aggression, mm -hmm. uh, possibly a serve and volley play. At 1540, you are copying that style as well. I don't think it's so much a serve and volley play, but it's still a lot of aggression, a bigger first serve, uh, you're going for that first serve, you're looking for forehands and possibly even coming straight in. So the aggression meter is still extremely high. Maybe it's come back a notch or two from Love 40, but the, you know, the foot's still down. Mm -hmm. So with both Love 40 and then obviously here, uh, it's very much uh, a mindset that you want to be in. Yes, it that is. That aggressive mindset. Yep. So Craig, we've, uh, we've stepped up to the line to serve. What are we going to do here? At 1540, we're trying to get to 3040. We're trying to get our head above water here. I'd love to see at 1540. Now, you may be enticed and certainly be thinking about the T-serve. I wouldn't use the T-serve here because the, the scoreboard is pressuring you. And, you know, when we talk about the T, I like to think when, you know, if you're serving at the T at 40-15, the scoreboard doesn't pressure it at all. And if you've run your primary patterns out wide on both sides and the opponent thinks it's going wide, you could almost put a beach towel down in that T area at 40-15, hit anywhere in, it's probably gonna be an ace or an unreturned serve. At 15-40, if you haven't done those patterns well and the scoreboard's pressuring you, it's like putting a face towel down and that you've gotta hit in order to get the same result. So, you know, a lot of pressure at 15-40 on the T serve. Unless you're really feeling it, unless the weakness is there, those are two you know, exceptions to the rule, of which there's always exceptions. But I want to see a wide sliding serve. I want you to get ahead and take the opponent off the court. I want them, I want them hitting and taking a step outside the doubles line. Now, a few years ago at the Australian Open, I think it was 2009, Sunga beat uh, Nadal 2-3-2 and two in the semis. I saw the serve speeds in that match. Songa was regularly serving about 88 miles an hour out wide, <laughs> extremely heavy slice, taking Nadal way off the court, but he was serving about 130 down the tee. So there's a massive difference in first serve speed between the slider out wide and the bomb down the tee. Take some power off it, add a lot of slice, take them off the court, and what you're really doing is opening the ad court hole over here to immediately attack. This ball, is typically going to be coming back in this area. You run around, you hit a forehand. Once again, if you're hitting a forehand approach, the win percentage is much better than hitting a backhand approach. And I would, again, along the lines of being aggressive, the wide slider made the first serve, the weaker return, you know, it's certainly coming back um, slow and you run around that ball and you, you rope a forehand, heavy spin, good depth, and make that backhand uh, pass on the run be a very difficult shot. A lot of times if you just run that well, probably the next shot's gonna be a lob and you've got an overhead mm -hmm. to get back to 30-40. So I, I'm very much in favor of quick strike. I'm not, I, don't, I think the longer at 15-40 the point goes, um, the more it's gonna favor the returner. You want a shorter point, you want to approach, you want to serve out wide, and then you're looking for a forehand. Yeah, you get the, uh, looking for the forehand and then if you come in behind this, because of where you're approaching from this way, it becomes a forehand uh, volley somewhere mm -hmm. in there, or mm -hmm. obviously an overhead where it's not over your back shoulder. It's, yeah. it's there for you if, if your opponent chucks up a lob. So um, um, positionally, you're in the right spot to, to hit what is probably your you know, better volley, your forehand mm -hmm. volley, and obviously an overhead. Yeah. Hey guys, if you like that strategy and you wanna learn more like them, then I wanna encourage you to pick up a copy of the Singles Playbook. 
Because to be a winning tennis player, you need more than one play. You need an entire playbook, and there's 41 plays uh, inside the singles playbook that'll show you how to beat players like the pusher, the counter puncher, the aggressive baseliner, uh, lefties, and so on. And if you click the link in the uh, description below this video, I will show you a play called uh, home base. This is a great play for beating all court players because it drives up their unforced errors and it gives you all sorts of opportunities to counterattack. So I'll show you how this play works and then if you like what you see, you can pick up uh, the singles playbook. All you gotta do again is just click the link in the description below uh, and you'll be good to go.